Back on the show is Jason the Kid Knight, who's going to be taking on Gabriel Benitez coming up here at UFC Fight Night 123 on December 9th. Jason, what's going on? How are you? Not much, man. I just got home from the gym, you know, trying to just uh, enjoy a little bit of downtime until I got to go back again tonight. I got I got to be back up there at 7 o'clock tonight and do the Muay Thai class. So I'm just going to get a little bit of rest and enjoy my family while I can. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I appreciate you taking the time uh, in between, uh, you know, training sessions and everything. And uh, I understand you recently got married. Um, how was that? Uh, how did the wedding go? Everything uh, pan out the way you wanted? Yeah, man, everything was great. Uh, we had a beautiful ceremony. And now, you know, got my best friend. She's got my last name and uh, you know, excited to see where our future goes. Yeah, for sure. How, how is uh, married life treating you these days? It must be nice not to have to talk about the wedding anymore. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, <laughs> It's same, you know, pretty much the same as it was before. You know, she hasn't changed. I haven't changed. So, you know, I, I always hear when you get married, uh, stuff changes. But, you know, we haven't been married for a week or so. So I guess we'll see how it goes. Yeah, for so far, so good, right? So Yeah, so yeah. far, so good. Um, did, did you get a honeymoon at all? Or are you going to do that later down the line? Yeah, but we're going to do that later. Uh, you know, soon after this next fight, you know, I'm a, I have more money in the bank and, uh, I told her just find find a spot, you know, anywhere in the world. We both got our passports. Wherever she wants to go, that's where we're, that's where we're gonna go. Awesome, man. Well, that sounds good. Glad you got that all kind of figured out. Um, let's talk about your last fight. I know uh, things didn't go your way in that one against Ricardo Lamas, but now that you've had a chance to sort of look it over, where do you feel like you went wrong in that fight? Ah, uh, man, at that level, you can't make any mistakes. You know, I, I made a few mistakes. Uh, first off, whenever he came in for the takedown, I, I've been working my wrestling so hard. And uh, I caught a guillotine right at first, and it was a tight, deep guillotine. And instead of trying to finish the guillotine, I was worried more about not getting it. So I let go of the guillotine and tried to stop the takedown. He wound up, he got the takedown anyways. Uh, then I get him in my rubber guard, and I was trying to stay calm, keep everything slow, and take my time. Well, then the referee walks over there. I think he was talking to Ricardo. Instead of me, the, he he walks over there and he says, "Look, I need you guys to work. Or I need you to work to finish." And uh, when he said, "I need you to work to finish," I tried going for a submission and that let him get out of my rubber guard. Well, then I I, I immediately I go straight for a leg lock. Wound up I couldn't get the leg lock. And then the most critical mistake of the whole fight, I stood up with my hands down and he caught me. You know, and once he usually whenever I get rocked. It takes me just a few seconds to recover. But at that level, you know, the, the level that Ricardo Lamas is at, he, he's fought at the higher level for a long time. If you get caught and they tell that you're hurt, they're going to stay on you. And that's what he, he, he did it perfectly. You know, he knew I was hurt and he didn't give me a, a inch of breathing room. So he wound up, you know, he finished me. But, uh, I was going to say, you showed, you showed a lot of heart in that fight, though. I mean, I think people were, you know, surprised you were taking those shots and still coming forward. I mean, that's why people love you is because you're, you know, you're, you're, you're just a warrior out there. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I never quit until it's over. And, uh, you know, I just, I, I think that, you know, I had the skills to win that fight. I was prepared. But uh, he had, you know, more more experience there. You know, I, I'm just now inside that top 15. And... I took that as a, a huge learning experience. You know, at that level, you have to be damn near flawless. And, you know, I made those few mistakes. And from now on, I'll make sure that I don't make those mistakes. And let's talk about what's next. I talked about it off the top. You're taking on Gabriel Benitez. He's got the 19-6 and six record. How do you feel like you match up against him in this fight? Uh, man, he's a tough guy. You know, I, I think that I can get the win. Um, I think that, you know, stand-up-wise, it's going to be a close fight. I think if I get into the ground, then, you know, I, I can dominate on the ground. Uh, you know, he's got some really hard leg kicks, like hard, hard leg kicks, hard body kicks, hard kicks in general. And, you know, that's one thing I have to worry about. Uh, he's got good crisp stand-up, like as far as boxing, he's got good hard straight punches. But, uh, you know, he's really basic, but he is super, super good at the basics. And then uh, you got to worry, like, if I go to take him down, he has a, a, a nasty, nasty guillotine that I have to worry about as well. You know, so I, I'm I'm working on, you know, preparing for everything that he's gonna throw at me. You know, that's what we always do. We go back and we watch our opponents, figure out, you know, what they're gonna throw, how they're gonna throw it, 
and we try to break it down to a science and you know make sure that I'm ready for anything and uh you know I believe that you know we we've worked our asses off to make sure that we're ready for whatever he's going to throw and I believe that you know when the time comes I'll be ready you mentioned his leg kicks. Are you getting anyone in training camp to kind of give you that look as far as, uh, you know, someone with maybe like a kickboxing background or anything like that? Uh, you know, we've got several guys that, you know, are good at kind of mimicking him. And uh, I got a buddy that his name's Brock Weaver. He hasn't quite made it to the UFC yet, but he's got awesome boxing and he's a great southpaw. So we've had him come down a little bit. And, you know, I'm just getting more and more southpaw guys just to, to come in there and try to mimic his style a little bit and, uh, you know, try to make sure that I'm ready for everything he throws at me. And uh, instead of, you know, when I spar, usually you go in sparring, you got 97% of the guys are right-handed. Well, now, you know, I'm making sure that I'm not going with any of those guys. I'm going with 97% southpaws. Every now and then, you know, I'll get a a right-handed guy just to kind of fill in around, but, Mostly it's all southpaws. Who are some of your uh, training partners that you're working with? Uh, you know, f- feel free to plug any, uh, even even guys that we might not know, because I always like hearing about up-and-comers. Yeah, I got a buddy named Tyler Hill. Uh, he, he's been helping me a lot, you know, sparring with me a lot. He, he's really good southpaw. He's a 170 guy, and, you know, he's an up-and-comer out of our gym. He'll, he'll be in the UFC before you know it. And I got Brandon Davis. He, he's my oh, awesome. trainer partner. He just, he just got a fight booked. He's, uh, who's, who's he fighting? Um, I'm trying to remember I can't I can't remember the guy's name, but he fights January twenty second. You know, he he's my training partner and also my striking coach as well. And uh he's not you know, he's not a traditional southpaw, but he's good. You know, he's good from Southpaw. So he's been coming in fighting Southpaw and mimicking the guy as much as he can. And then you got of course Brock Weaver, like I said. I got I got a few other training partners, you know, that they're just up and coming guys, but uh you know, we, we really haven't tried to bring anyone special in for this fight. Just whoever whoever's able to come, that we're, we're happy to have them, you know. And uh, this fight's a couple weeks away. Um, how's the weight cut going getting down to 145? Uh, my weight's always good, man. I, I never cut anything until, you know, the day before weigh-ins. Uh, I'm like 158 to 160. And that's where I stay. I, fl- I fluctuate from between 158 to 162. And right now I'm right at 160, you know, after a training session, after eating and everything, and I wake up around 158. So as long as I get there on fight week and I'm 158 pounds, that Thursday is when I start cutting. You know, I'll be 158 pounds Thursday night, and we'll start cutting Thursday night. Probably 5 or 6 in the afternoon, I stop eating, stop drinking, start losing my weight. I lose half of it Thursday night. And then we wake up and we weigh in early Friday morning. So I, I I usually lose most of it Thursday night. I leave you know a pound or two to go, and then wake up Friday morning, knock off that last little bit, and be on the scales bright and early. How do you see this fight ending on December 9th? I mean, you're going to win. You wouldn't have taken the fight, but how do you sort of see it ending? Uh you know I I could honestly see me getting a takedown and Gabriel Benitez. He likes to. He likes to give his back when he stands up a lot. And I imagine that I take him down, he tries to stand up, I take his back, finish the rear naked choke. Either that, you know, either that or, you know, a hard fought decision. But uh, I know he's not going to go out easy. So stand up wise, we're going to be kind of neck and neck. And I'm going to put the pressure on him. And first chance that I see, like, if, if I need to take him down, the first time I feel like I'm in any, any kind of trouble, I'm going to take him down. And I think that if I do get into the ground, I can finish the fight pretty easy. Before I let you go, uh, are you watching any TV right now, any Netflix, anything like that uh, during training camp right now? I think I'm about to start the flash, though, and, you know, just keep that DC series going and watch it, you know. just Awesome. Well, I uh, can't wait for this fight. It's a UFC Fight Night 123. It's coming up here December 9th. Uh, Jason, always a pleasure talking to you, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you got any sponsors or shout-outs, the floor is yours, sir. All uh, right. Man, I, I want to thank BrandonMcNinja.com. You know, he, he's a good sponsor of mine. Uh, also, you know, put on Twitter already. It's at JasonTheKid23. You know, follow me on Instagram. It's at JTKTheKid. Uh, 
uh, Facebook, which is Jason the Kid Knight. You know, go on my fan page, hit the like button, hit the share button, get the word out on social media. I, I'm not as active as some people, but, uh, you know, once it gets close to fight time, I try, I try to make sure I keep you all informed. So thank you all so much, and I, I appreciate the support.